Welcome, everyone. This is the Friday edition, January 21st, 2022 of the NFL Predicted Playbook. We're going to be focusing on the divisional round of the playoffs, mainly the NFC conference matchups, the pair of games that will be taking place Saturday and Sunday. And I'm, of course, John Ryan, your host, and I'm joined by my good friend and professional sports better, fellow sports member, TV teammate, Dr. Chuck. Welcome to the show, Dr. Chuck, and we're going to get right to it here. And we're going to start this show off here looking at the Packers home at Lambeau. It's going to be single digits. They're taking on probably the red hot, uh, no pun intended, actually pun intended, I think. The red hot San Francisco 49ers, this line has just shifted from six to five and a half. As we record this at 7.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Friday, the Green Bay Packers organization and their fans and their 38-year-old quarterback are fully aware that the clock is ticking and it's ticking loudly and that this may be it. This may be it for Aaron Rodgers' career. He may end up playing somewhere else. He may end up coming back to the Packers, but this is a win or go home is, is never truer in this matchup. With a win, the Packers would lead into uh, their sixth conference championship under the tenure of Aaron Rodgers. And they would play the winner of the Rams and the Tampa Bay Bucks that play on Sunday. The temperatures are going to be in single digits at the 815 kickoff at Lambeau Field. But uh, as we know, Dr. Chuck, the Packer fans and all home fans will be more than prepared and primed after a long day of tailgating and other activities in preparation to do their part to support their team and drive them into the victory lane. Now, the betting markets have seen an initial wave of Packers, but as you mentioned before we went on the air, the line has now come back down to five and a half. Um, you know, there's still a couple sixes, but I think you're, the market is right. It's going to start coming down here ahead of game time. You take a look at the, the 49ers. They're just a scary team right now. You, we don't know the status of Bosa, their defensive end, and Fred Warner, their great linebacker. Uh, but I... Yeah, from everything I've read, Dr. Chuck, it looks like they are going to play. And it's just a question of how well they're going to be able to play. And the cold temperatures are not going to help. Um, 49ers are playing on one less day of rest than they're used to playing, while the Packers have had a week off. So, um, you know, let's hear from you and, and tell us some of the insights that you have for this game. Yeah, it was interesting that you started off by talking about Aaron Rodgers' future because, <clears throat> you know, we've joked about him on this show and, and other shows that he did tell us that he was going to make a quick decision. That doesn't mean that he's honest about it. <laughs> uh, but, you know, there I, there are teams out there that are making moves thinking that they can convince feel bad for Vic Fangio because I don't know if he deserved to get fired, but clearly uh, I think John Elway has a, a pitch that he's looking at for A-Rod. So I think that there's playoff scenario earlier than others. We were discussing off air that, that, you know, we both loved the Niners last week, but we have to not, you know, not get carried away with what I thought all season was a paper tiger in Dallas. I, I, I can't say that their offense wasn't good at times. I understand it was good at times, but to anybody that got enamored with what they were doing was – confused or not paying full attention or um, just maybe more trusting of Mike McCarthy type team in this type of situation. And so I understand why the line goes up a little bit, even though the Niners, you know, kind of handled that the whole, whole game. I know there's some drama at the end kind of, but it seems meaningless at this point. So plus four, plus four and a half at, when it opened, I wouldn't have wanted anything to do with plus six. I was hoping they were going to push it a little bit more and maybe get that up over that line. But the Packers at home in the playoffs with Aaron Rodgers, actually, this has been the line a lot, and they're not covering that. So, I mean, it's it's good value. I wouldn't lay anything on the Packers, especially because one of the crux of this where we're looking at is the Packers are the worst rush defense on their home field this season by a lot. They average 5.6. They allow 5.6 yards per rush attempt. No one else on their home field this season averaged giving up more than five per rush attempt. So, I mean – some of these could be aberrations, but they're playing the worst team to have that stat going. They are the healthier team, like you brought up, and if the Niners are less healthy on defense, that's a problem because nobody stops Devontae Adams. You know, few people stop Aaron Rodgers, especially at home. And so if it becomes a game where you have to score each time, 
you're probably going to be happy to have a Packers ticket. That that total of 47, I think, is even tighter than the the plus five and a half, minus five and a half. So I don't really like that either. But I just I, I can't imagine similar to what we're going to talk about in the next game. Can't imagine holding a minus six or a minus five and a half with Aaron Rodgers as you see the Niners try and hold the ball for 35, 38 minutes and hope that he can get it done in such short periods of time like we saw last year where Matt LaFleur freaked out because he was afraid we we're going to get the ball too a few times and he kicked field goal. So, you, and, you know, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's not where I would want to be laying wood with this team that I just don't fully always trust. And, and Debo Samuel is a monster and Kyle Shanahan knows what to do with those exotic rushing, you know, schemes Elijah yep. Mitchell and hammers it up the middle and, and, and you know, Kyle Shanahan can, can, can probably play keep away. Can his defense then sustain that? I, I, I fully agree. Um, I think that, I think the market is reflecting probably 85% of the bets this week are because of the rest. And, um, it was on a, uh, a new bet on it show, Dr. Chuck, as you know, with, um, Kelly Stewart and Ralph Michaels and Ralph Michaels is, is really good at pulling out the analytics. And, uh, he, he basically did a study that shows that the rest really doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't matter to the betters. It matters straight up and who advances. Uh, but in terms of the ATS, a lot of the stuff was pretty close to being even. Um, and this is the first time ever we've had a team playing a playoff game off of six days of rest instead of the full seven. Uh, but again, the supporting cast on offense for the 49ers is frightening to me if I'm a defensive coordinator. Uh, I, I don't know how in the world you cover all those guys. And, you know, Garoppolo played in New England, don't forget. And I know you wouldn't forget, Dr. Chuck, but, you know, New England isn't exactly have prime weather this time of year either. Although he didn't play, he still experienced it. And, uh, it, I'm sure, you know, the Belichick organization taught every player on that roster how to prepare for these frigid temperatures and and uh, not make it a factor in their performance. And, uh, you know, the same thing with Shanahan and his and his team of coaches. Uh, what I want to do, though, is I want to run through uh, a drill down of, of rushing attempts. And it's not necessarily rushing yards per game that uh, gives you some insights in the playoffs. It's more important with rushing attempts. And then as we advance through the playoffs, I'll bring a metric up for the Super Bowl that is passing yards divided by rushing attempts. And the team that has the advantage there, you'll see um, combined with red zone effectiveness, it, it produces a pretty darn good high percentage for the championship uh, Super Bowl champion. But first, just plain uh, rushing attempts. The team that has averaged more rushing attempts in the playoffs is 136, 107 straight up. That's 56% straight up. Against the spread, they're 128, 109 with six pushes. That's 54%. So that's not that bad, really. Uh, just blindly taking the team that in the playoffs every single game. Uh, Over-under is 118, 122 and three pushes. So nothing there. All right. So we'll take rushing attempts advantage. In other words, more rushing attempts and the dog. Now we get a little bit better. The straight up record is only forty eight and seventy two, but you know, Chuck, you and I are definitely Dogs. more interested in against the spread and over under. So over under uh against the spread, sorry, sixty six, fifty two and two. That translates to fifty six percent winning bets. Uh over under is fifty two, sixty seven and one. That's fifth that's forty four percent uh for the over. So in other words, fifty six percent if you're betting under. So we're starting to get somewhere here. Uh, the next level down, uh, rushing attempts, advantage, and a favorite. Interesting that it's, the, it's pretty much the same record as, as the dog because these teams are playing each other. Um, going one step further, more rushing attempts and an away dog of four and a half or fewer points. And here's where we hit uh, some pay dirt on both the, the side and the total. We're 48 and 72 straight up. Against the spread, we go to 66, 52, and 2. That's 56% winners. And the under 67 and 52 for 
winning bets. One last thing, Chuck, before I let you comment on this. You mentioned that Green Bay is allowing five, more than five rushing yards per attempt in their home games this year. That is shocking. And I continue to think that that is going to be the difference in this game with Mitchell and that power and the offensive line just wearing down that defensive front. We'll have to wait and see. Straight up uh, is 5-10 and ten for these teams, these home teams that are allowing greater than five rushing yards per attempt during the regular season. This is the playoff result. Straight up 5-10 and ten against the spread, 6-8-1. and one. Over-under is 5-10. and ten. So that's 67% betting the under in this game. And initially, that is what makes sense to me in this in this game. What do you think about all that stuff? I yeah I <laughs> if I was it's one of those things where I don't want to say everything has to be correlated, but we're talking about this in the next game as well. I feel like if you're thinking Niners, you're thinking under. If you're thinking Packers, you're thinking over or maybe even team total Packers over type situation. Because, you know, we're looking at correlated score. Vegas is telling you it's going to be 27-21, 26-21, something like that. And, you know, even even the Niners in that final game of the regular season against the Rams where it looked like they were just getting beaten and beaten, you know, they adjust on the fly on defense just fantastically. And that's tough against Aaron Rodgers. But if – if you get a couple stops early and you just keep possessing the ball, it, you know, it's, it's like you said, that's the whole point of why this metric should line up and why dogs, you know, you add the dog in there and it improves because Debo Samuel, Elijah Mitchell, just keep running. You know, they also, when they put it in Jimmy G's hands, he's not, um, you know, he, he's throwing high percentage plays. You know, he's also going to be a little bit gimpy, so I don't think they're going to stretch it. I don't think Kyle Shanahan's going to be like, let's just chuck the ball down the field, especially early if it doesn't need to be done. And so I, yeah, I would absolutely it's, – it's going to be how you would want to go on the spread. It, it, even if you don't have a side on the spread, you know, you want to analyze this. I think I think 47 is a pretty good number. I, I thought that it would maybe be a little lower. Thanks, everyone, for watching the NFL Divisional Playoff Round. We'll see you again next week for the championship conference games to break down. And until then, remember, always bet with your head and never over it. And may all the wins be yours.